Okay, hi. So in this video, we'll be looking at one of the most impressive AI art generators. One that is actually capable of creating genuinely beautiful stuff. I mean, look at these things. Now, most importantly, before everything else, stop wasting your energy. Most of the time, you're going to be making tests because you don't actually know what's going to look good, you know, what images are going to combine nicely together. For that purpose, you only want to be using these settings I'm going to show you. What we're going to do to make a test is choose your picture, you're going to go deep style, Thin style is a lot more like a Photoshop filter. It seems pointless and it has only a few set options to pick from, so I don't know why it's here. Deep Dream is the same as Deep Style, but it only creates one type of psychedelic images. So unless that's what you want, you want to go to Deep Style all the time. Now to pick a style image, some advice here. If you pick a style that has black in it, and your original image doesn't have black, then what's going to happen is it's going to take the darkest area of your picture and it's going to make it black. So maybe you don't want that, just have that in mind. Or in other words, try to pick a style that has the same value range as your original to get results that have more sense of volume. Now, it goes without saying, but pick images that have a high quality both for the style and for the original. This will improve the quality of your renders, it will make them more sharp. For saving your energy and doing these tests, go to Deep Style version 2. I tried Deep Style version 1 and it seems to do the exact same thing, except for one difference, which is that the price is sometimes bugged, sometimes it costs more than it should. Also, nothing about version 1 is even mentioned in the instructions, so yeah, I would say to just ignore it for now. The results seem identical otherwise. For the resolution, pick 0. 0.36. Going higher is going to improve the size of your image, but it doesn't actually affect the way the AI interprets the shape. The result is going to look identical, just smaller resolution. For the enhance, change this one to medium. Why medium if we are trying to save energy? Well, because it's free, actually. I don't have any idea why, but it is free regardless of other settings, so just go for it every time. What this does is it gives more clarity to your image, it removes the noise, it makes the shapes more readable. Now iteration boost, very important, change this one to 0 0.6. Uh, the difference is actually invisible on the end result, and yes, it saves you 40% of your energy. Now for the style weight, uh, this one seems irrelevant. I did multiple renders with the same image and varying amounts of style weight, and I got almost identical results. So leave it at 50% or try going lower, uh, but don't go higher. Higher values means your original image will lose its sharpness and details, so I don't really see much point to it unless you're going for something very, very abstract. I wouldn't go lower than 50% either, because if I want the style to be less dramatic, I can later do that by adding the original image on top of the rendered image and change the opacity to whatever feels right. Style scale. Changing it slightly seems to do nothing at all. Changing it all the way to 40% leads to some ugly renders that lose the sense of volume. It starts looking a lot like repetitive patterns over flat surfaces. Preserve colors does exactly what it says. Your colors will come 100% from the original image and pretty much only the textures are going to change. This doesn't cost anything. Style scale also doesn't cost anything. Same for style weight. These are free, so don't stress too much about them, but yeah, I would generally leave them as they are. For preserved colors, I prefer to keep it off all the time, and if I want to make an image have the colors of the original, I can very easily do that using a color layer in any editing software. Just place the original as a color layer on top of the rendered result, and I can bring anything back to its original color. So, so yeah. Okay, now, 
what's the result? Changing from 0.6 megapixels to 0.36 cut our cost from 5 to 3 energy. Changing iteration boost from 1 to 0.6 reduce the cost even further from 3 to only 2 energy. And again, what we get for 2 energy is exactly what we would get on higher settings. It's just smaller and with some noise, but the way the AI interprets the image, again, it's exactly, exactly the same. So if you now decide that you like your render and you want to make it in a bigger size, you're not going to have any surprises, you're actually going to get exactly what you want. Once you make a render you like, you can go here to Dream Page and increase its resolution to 1.2 megapixels. Now, be careful because once you click this button, the thing will take your energy automatically and start processing the thing. You won't be able to confirm anything and you won't get to make other choices. For example, you won't be allowed to change the enhancement value or the iteration boost. So generally, when I like one of my test results, I just start a new render. Now, let's say you have no money to spend on this program, but you want to make the best of it. You should publish your dreams every day. This way you'll get your requirements met faster for leveling up to the dreamer rank and also for the deep dreamer rank later on. This will allow you to create 1.2 megapixel images, which in pixels translates 1670 by 720. So like it's not a poster, but it's pretty good. And for that, you will need to publish 20 dreams, have a 7 days account and 200 likes. So now to create the final render, pick your desired size, I'm guessing the highest you have access to. For this example, I'll go with 2.1 megapixels. Unfortunately, this is only available for advanced paid users, but I'll just say I find it well worth the uh, $19 plus VAT to have this for a month. However, if you're hesitant on whether this is worth or not, um, a small mention here, you might prefer Art Breeder, which will give you more content per dollar spent. I'll include a comparison to Art Breeder at the end of the video. If you want the quick answer, they're both very good and very different. Now back to our render, set enhanced to high for free energy or extra high for 5 energy. The price is flat regardless of image size, so choose wisely. Enhance does make your result look a lot better, but if you can use a noise reduction filter in another software, that can be a good alternative to save on energy. For this example, I'll pick high. Keep iteration boost at 0.6. Seriously, it makes a very small difference when you change this one. So the price of my image is going to be 32 multiplied by 0 0.6, which is 19, uh, plus 3 for the enhancement equals 22. So these here are, I think, the best prices you can get to create awesome renders, like what you'll see on the front page. And that's pretty much all you need to know about how to use energy efficiently. I have no idea why they decided to make this so uh, complicated in the sense that like they should just show you the price in energy when you pay for something. But until then, I hope this Google Sheets document helps you. The link is in the description. Now, just a cool tip, when you browse images on the website, you can click this button here to save the style. That way you can use it yourself later. A note here, the AI uses the patterns from the style to rebuild your original image. So if you want to claim the result as belonging to you, you must either own both of the images or you must use images that are copyright free. If you use, for example, somebody else's painting or whatever. Uh, but of course, if you use a painting from Van Gogh, then you own the result because nobody has rights over that. Now, I must mention how impressive are the results this AI is capable of. As an artist, I'm all about making cool stuff, right? And I'm less into doing the same thing a million times over. And part of the requirement to be successful is to have a style and yes, to be willing to do the same thing a million times. So for me, the possibility that AI can take away a huge chunk of that and allow future generations of artists to create thousands of times more stuff is just amazing, like, yeah. 
and I can hear someone typing, uh, but then there will be too much art and nobody will value the real art anymore. Well, no, like, there's never such a thing as too much art. And that's because when it's too much, you can bring it all together to create something else, something more unique and rare and beautiful. For example, if you have 100 paintings, it sounds like a lot, but if you exchange that for just 100 frames of animation, you only have 3 to 4 seconds. Now, imagine a world where your favorite creators are able to produce I don't know, three times more stuff because they're no longer stuck in doing repetitive tasks. Hell, maybe even a lot more than that. Projects like animation, movies, and most importantly now games, they take crazy amounts of effort and that makes them unavailable art forms for most of us who don't have the time or money to follow our dreams without failing our survival needs. Now, I'm hoping AI will be a solution to that and that it will make these art forms more accessible to individuals or small teams. Alright, now for the comparison to Art Breather. Uh, the two websites offer very different kinds of art. Art Breather is very versatile. It lets you create characters, portraits and landscapes, as well as other random stuff, furries, anime characters and other horrors. Now, for only $9, no, I'm not sponsored, you get 200 high resolution downloads. I've used Art Breather a lot and I downloaded all my favorite designs and I'm nowhere near 200 downloads. It, it really feels like a lot. And yeah, you can design an infinite number of stuff. The limit is only on which ones you want to download in high resolution. I've used characters I downloaded to overpaint them and turn them into real designs for a project. And I've used the landscapes to add awesome looking backgrounds to my creatures with only a bit of editing needed to soften the image and have it support the creatures, not compete with them. The image uploads are nice, however, they're not incredibly useful. For example, I won't be able to upload and modify my own art. It only works for landscapes and portraits. And if you insert something else, it's just going to glitch out. Ah, I almost forgot about portraits. Uh, they're very cool, actually. My friend created some of his characters to show me how to draw them. And I also inserted one of his pics in the system and I created this. The biggest advantage to Art Breeder is it's way more fast and naturally it's more fun. You can tweak many settings and see changes within a second most of the time. Once you know what style you want, you can create your own genes, which makes the process extremely quick. Basically, you show the AI what you consider cool and then you can pretty much pick any image and make it cool with that one slider. Uh, the first time I used Art Breeder, I think I spent half a day on it, just spamming everything. My first time on Deep Dream Generator was quite the disaster because I didn't know what settings do what and I ended up paying massive energy for trash renders. And there is actually more. To Art Breeder, you can also make around 2-3 to three minutes of 30 FPS animations, which is very cool and very easy to do. Or you can set the lower FPS and have a longer animation. I mean, I'm just giving an example to give you an idea of what 3000 frames means. If this video gets just 50 comments from unique users, I'll know people are interested and I'll make a video all about Art Breeder next. And if we get even more, then maybe I'll make an update on my experience with um, Deep Dream Generator. My month just started, the um, month I paid for. I haven't had time to actually create anything super cool with it. I just kind of figured out the basics of how it works. So yeah, maybe by the end of the month, I'll create an update and let you guys know what I've made. We talked about Art Breeder. Now let's talk about why Deep Dream Generator is insanely good. Unlike Art Breeder, it lets you create real finished looking artwork. Stuff that you could actually hang on a wall because of how awesome it looks. You can turn your own photos of your family and pets and whatnot into stuff that no artist or graphic designer will do for you for your $20. I won't be surprised at all if people already started selling this stuff. 
either offering prints, commissions or making NFTs or whatever out of it. Where in Artbreeder you can only create landscapes, portraits and characters pretty much. Here you can create anything. If you're a photographer, literally every photo you take has potential to be transformed into something extremely cool. For $19, well, well it's more like $22, I get uh, 120 points every 10 hours. So if I use it before and after I go to bed, as well as one time in between, I can use all the 288 daily points. And divided by the price of a detailed render, which is 22, that makes 13 renders per day. Or instead I can do 144 test renders each day. If we multiply 13 by 30, we have 390 possible renders in a month. Or instead we can have 300 big renders and 990 test renders in a month. Making 300 artworks for $19 is pretty fair. That actually brings Deep Dream Generator close to being as cheap as Artbreeder, but only if you have what it takes to use it daily and to spend your energy wisely. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, subscribe. I'm pretty interested in AI, so I'll very likely be making more content about it in the future. Uh, and yeah, to everyone who saw my um, Clip Studio brush tutorial and uh, commented on that, thank you for doing so. Your support is very much appreciated and it's part of the reason that I'm trying to come back to YouTube. I definitely want to create more Clip Studio con content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at some point in the future.